Hi, I'm Katie, and this is Clothes and Storytelling, a mini-series where I talk about different attire and how it's used in fiction, because the clothes a character wears can tell you a story too. Today we'll be talking about the duffel coat. First appearing in the 1850s, the duffel coat is made from a coarse, thick woolen material. It's three quarters long, ending at the knees, has large outside patch pockets, and a deep hood. Probably the most distinct thing about duffel coats are their toggle fastenings, making them easier to do up with gloves than having buttons. Remember, duffel coats have toggles. Do you remember we showed you a button? Button? No. Oh, the toggle. Do get it right, Ducky, yes. The name derives from duffel, a town in Belgium where the material originated. The actual design of the duffel coat was inspired by a Polish military frock coat from the 1820s. The hood and toggle fastenings proved to be useful in harsh winds, so by 1890 it was supplied to the British Royal Navy in World War I, and Field Marshal Lord Montgomery was a famous wearer of the coat in the Second World War. After the war, the coats became available as government surplus stock and became popular to British youth in the 50s and 60s, and is still manufactured today. Now let's talk about symbolism. When a character is seen wearing a duffel coat, what does that say about them? Firstly, it's associated with Britishness. If a character is seen in a duffel coat, odds are they are English and or the story is set in Britain. Or in Japan, duffel coats are particularly popular with the Japanese. According to British manufacturer Gloverall, Japan became their biggest export by the mid-70s. In terms of country versus city, the duffel coat can fit well in either. It began as popular in rural villages, but soon became popular to wear in the city, and even worn by the rich, though it never seemed to lose its association with the working class. The coats can go well with casual clothes such as jeans, yet can also go well with suits owing to the clothes' breathing room. And perhaps more importantly, characters who wear a duffel coat are usually underdogs or outcasts. The coat was popular among the working class, worn by fishermen and hardy manual types, the duffel is the epidome of function over fashion. Duffel coats also have a yoke, an extra layer of cloth over the shoulders to prevent premature wear from carrying items over one shoulder. On top of that, its rather shapeless body and practical hood make it the go-to coat to show your hero has a no-nonsense approach to life. Its design is utilitarian. It's good for showing your protagonist is willing to get their hands dirty and make mistakes. Duffel-coated characters are hard workers, but at the same time may have a quiet, laid-back, unassuming personality around other characters. Jonathan Creek is an amateur detective who is constantly underestimated by others because of his unassuming nature. He also doesn't care about what others think of him. In just about every episode, he's seen wearing a duffel coat. The coat makes a character stand out, but not in an obvious way. It's old-fashioned without being anachronistic in a modern setting. Duffel coats are also worn during winter and autumn, the resting periods of the year. Winter especially symbolizes things like hibernation, the end of things, and death. The Japanese video game Let It Die gives death a duffel coat, putting a modern Terry Pratchett-y comical spin on the Grim Reaper. Though now duffels can be found in every color, they're traditionally beige or deep blue, which are muted neutral colors. Characters wearing classic duffel coats aren't wearing colors that are loud, so they themselves are probably not loud personalities. Characters wearing the coat are generally pretty gentle and modest. Samuel Pinkett is a good example of this. Sam is a shy office worker who gets tangled up in a deadly conspiracy. He wears a duffel coat throughout season 1 but loses it in season 2. Not just for the practical reason that he's going to Texas, where it's too hot for him to wear it, but also to symbolize that he's become more confident and is shedding his British identity to start a new life in America. Jack in A Fantastic Fear of Everything is a meek children's book author who, throughout the film, has to face his inner demons from his childhood. The coats are also associated with childlike characters. Duffels, being soft, cozy, and hard to wear down, have become popular with young children. Perhaps the most famous owner of a duffel coat is Paddington Bear, who first wore one in Michael Bond's book, A Bear Called Paddington. Every adaptation of Paddington has kept this design.
So the next time you watch a film or a series, consider this. What are the characters wearing? The duffel coat has a long history and has gone through many alterations, but like its toggles, some things about it refuse to change. It represents a character who is hardworking, humble, calm, and childlike, and is a symbol of the underdog. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this and other videos here, please consider donating over at Patreon. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe. This is my first video essay, so I need all the help I can get finding an audience. Ta-ra!